When I was a kid, there was two things that I loved. Gears of War, which was the only game that I was good at at the time, and Warhammer 40k. Now for those of you who don't know what that is, Gears of War is a fantastic Xbox game, go check it out. No, what I mean is Warhammer. And for those of you who don't know what that is, it's a tabletop board game that will not only eat your time, but it will also eat all of your money. So in 2011, when a Space Marine game was released, bringing the tabletop game to life with the gameplay of Gears of War, I was all over it. Now, I haven't played Space Marine since it originally released, and I thought I'd do something special. Now, this week's review, I'm doing a giveaway as well, so stick around to the end to find out how you can enter and what's up for grabs. Developed by Relic and released in 2011, Space Marine was a third-person action shooter similar to that of Gears of War based in the Warhammer 40k universe. Duh. Previously, we had titles like Dawn of War, and we'd never really had a third-person action title like this before, at least for Warhammer. Now, sure, there was Warhammer Fire Warrior, but that was a first-person shooter, and we don't talk about that. Anyways, you play as Games Workshop's favourite faction, the Space Marines, an army of genetically modified super soldiers who wear giant bulky power armour who flat up kill anything that isn't human. Yeah, Warhammer isn't an inclusive universe. You play as Captain Titus of the Ultramarines, basically the most recognisable faction of Space Marines ever. Ultramarines are like the Chicago Bulls or the New England Patriots, they're the poster boys. The story of Space Marine is that a Orc invasion force has landed on a manufacturing planet and the Imperium of Man sent in the Ultramarines. Well, they send in three Ultramarines to stop them. The Orcs are basically what you think they are, but more of a space version of them. They're raiders and junkers who basically fly through space looting everything they can and killing everyone in the process. The Orcs have arrived on this planet as it is a manufacturing planet known for things known as Titans basically giant walking tanks that can fuck up nearly anything. As Captain Titus, it is up to you and two of your other Ultramarine brothers to stop the Orc invasion and secure the planet. If you've played Gears of War, then Space Marine will be very familiar. It is a third person shooter and the controls are quite similar to that of Gears of War and there is a chainsaw weapon. Space Marine is also that of a bit of hack and slash style too, merging both close range combat and standard shooting. You'll start off with the standard bolt pistol, which is your Space Marine's standard sidearm. Now this weapon will have unlimited ammo, which is basically a Space Marine's get out of jail free card. Shortly after the start of the game, you'll get your bread and butter for every Space Marine, the Bolter. The Bolter is what the E-11 blasters are for Stormtroopers. Now the Bolter fires rocket propelled rounds towards an enemy and it is 75 caliber rounds, and it also has a small explosion too, so yeah, it packs a fucking wallop. Now the Bolter works like your standard assault rifle here in the game, and while it's nothing special, it is a staple for a Space Marine. Then there's the Stalker Bolter, which is basically a semi-automatic scoped rifle, which is pretty basic, but it comes in handy when taking out some targets at long range. Now the Stalker Bolter, from my knowledge, is a made-up weapon for this game, as is the Vengeance Launcher, which is a grenade launcher with remote charges and it sticks to enemies. Think of the sticky grenades from Halo, but in a grenade launcher format. While it is another made-up weapon, it definitely does come in handy when you're surrounded by orcs. Now speaking of that, my favourite weapon in this game, both in the video game and on the tabletop, is a weapon called the Melter Gun. Now this gun fires super hot liquid that can burn through tanks. Basically, if you've got a heavy unit on the tabletop and you're playing the tabletop game, like you've got a Dreadnought or a tank or whatever it might be, and you've got a squad with a Melter Gun next to it, there's a chance that they'll shoot straight through that tank. Now in Space Marine, the Melter Gun is your standard shotgun and it has a pretty decent spread and range too and it will melt through a squad of Orcs, no problem. Now there's other weapons too like the Heavy Bolter which is just a larger version of the standard Bolter. It's sorta of like carrying a turret in Halo 3. You'll deal a load of damage but you move very slowly. Same with the Heavy Plasma Gun which works like the plasma weapons in Halo. Again, it's, it's nothing new to something that you're not already familiar with. But one of the main draw cuts for Space Marine when it was first announced and released was melee combat. The combat here in Space Marine has the brutality and gore of Gears of War, but also decent executions from the Wolverine Origins video game. Now yeah, that movie was awful, but the game was actually pretty solid. Go back and take a look at it, maybe I will at some point. Now whenever enemies get close, you'll be able to pull out your melee weapon and just swing away. At the start of the game, you'll have this really shitty knife, but before long you get another iconic weapon for Space Marines, the chainsaw. Basically, it's a sword, but it's a chainsaw, and yeah, there's similar weapons like this found in Fallout as well. You'll also find power weapons, which deal more damage, but also trade weapon damage for speed. 
you'll find the power axe which is my personal favorite which is medium speed medium damage but then there's the power hammer and it's a giant war hammer that deals loads of damage but you move incredibly slowly and you only be able to use your sidearm or a bolter where with a chainsword and the power axe you'll be able to sheathe your weapon on your hip and basically use whatever weapon you've got equipped now, unlike Gears of War, there is no cover here in Space Marine, which, if you ask me, is a flat-out lie. Anyways, you won't be able to take cover here, and the reason for this was that because Space Marines know no fear and charge into battle, and that's basically how the game is supposed to be played. The gold bar around the outside is your power armor shields, and it works like shields in every game, but more specifically, probably something like Halo. Take too much damage and then you'll start to lose health, but if you go away from the combat and let it recharge, your shield will recharge as you'd expect. Your health, on the other hand, works differently. Now there are no med packs here in Space Marine that you can find on the field, and the only way to restore your character, Captain Titus's health, is to execute enemies. By pressing the stun button, your enemies will go into a stun phase, and then you'll have the opportunity to perform an execution that will give you health back. Now it is an interesting system because the executions themselves are fantastic, and you'll never get bored of them, but having a space marine charge into combat to get health, yeah, I'll, I'll come back to that in a second. Now, majority of the game is rinse and repeat with shoot or slice your way through hordes of enemies while defending allies or waiting for a computer to load and generic video game crap. However, there are sections where you'll get a jump pack and a power hammer, and here the gameplay changes from shooter to basically launching yourself into the air and slamming back down onto the ground, blasting everything around you. These moments of gameplay are fantastic as they break up the rinse and repeat mechanics. Now doing some missions too, you need to defend a warship that you're in or defend a train, and they're more like on rails turret shooter moments, which of course are nothing special, but they break up that standard monotonous gameplay and provide something fresh. Now the last gameplay mechanic is your fury meter, and this is where God of War's gameplay comes into play. You'll build up fury during combat and by activating it you'll do more damage, slowly regenerate your health and when you're aiming with any weapon you'll go into a bit of a bullet time mode. And I found I was barely using this ability and only really using it if there were a heap of enemy bosses or units charging me and I knew I needed some sort of assistance or a buff. There's also moments in the story where you need to use this ability to regenerate your health and it shows some questionable decisions made by Relic Entertainment. Now graphically, Space Marine came out in 2011, it's 10 years old, and it's still a great looking game. Characters look like they've been pulled straight from the tabletop. Voice acting is top notch too, with Captain Titus, your character, being voiced by Mark Strong, whose voice is liquid sex. Consider that your Imperial Sanction. Very well. Orcs sound like, well I can't say what I thought they've always sounded like because Dawn of War was released before this, but they sound like they're Australians. Space Marine! Was that supposed to hurt? <laughs> the Orc war boss looks and sounds great, and hearing a war before seeing a horde of Orcs run towards you is a fantastic sight. <laughs> now, of course, the standard gameplay is simple and fun for Space Marine, if not a little bit repetitive. But by the time you start to get over fighting waves of orcs in different locations, the story changes. Basically what happens is you've found an inquisitor who needs your help firing a weapon that can wipe out all orcs on the planet, which you know, of course, being in the game, it's going to be a big deal because orcs are trying to take over the planet. But as a surprise to no one, you fire up the weapon, but you find that you actually open up this thing called a warp gate and you summon chaos space marines, which of course sounds like an evil faction to the space marines. But, of course, there are no real good or evil factions in Warhammer because everyone is either good or everyone is either bad. There's no good. Everything's grey. Anyways, Chaos Space Marines provide a different enemy variant to face because the entire time you've been going up against Orcs and it's getting a little boring. And Chaos Space Marines and Bloodletters are really fucking cool characters and enemies to go up against and even great in their designs. Bloodletters, which are the Chaos Demons, will deal loads of damage in close range and also dash around rather quickly avoiding your attacks, so it can be harder to focus and take them out. Chaos Space Marines are tougher to take down than Orcs, basically like taking down a Chaos Evil, Twisted Warped version of yourself because you're a Space Marine. Weapons like the Laz Cannon, which is basically the version of a sniper rifle for this game, will take them out fairly quickly, but they only have a limited number of charges. Now the gameplay is solid, graphics hold up for a 10 year old game, but there are some holes in this both as a game perspective and as a Warhammer fan. What do you mean? 
For starters, there's no cover mechanics in Space Marine, and when you're low on health, you're encouraged to go in and execute an enemy to regenerate your health or use your Fury ability to replenish your health. Which, okay, that's the decision they made for this game. However, there's one point in the campaign where you'll need to go inside a research facility that has no orcs but is full of sentry turrets. Now, because there is no cover mechanic, you need to awkwardly stand behind items and peek out around them and shoot them. And in my opinion, while it is a great idea for a level, it's the worst level in the game by far because the game is made for taking out enemies and this wasn't really made for hiding behind objects awkwardly and just popping out and shooting. Now, if there was a cover mechanic in the game, then it would make this level more enjoyable. On top of that too, there are no orcs in this area, so anytime your health gets low, you need to use your fury to recharge your health and it just feels cheap. Now, in the Warhammer 40k miniatures game, orcs are a force to be reckoned with at close range, but they suck at ranged attacks. Here in Space Marines, ranged orcs are really accurate with their weapons and they also deal a decent amount of damage, which doesn't make sense, especially for a Warhammer fan. So if you are a Warhammer fan coming into Space Marine, there's loads of moments where you'll sit there and go, wait, that wouldn't happen. The entire game of Space Marine is you and two other Space Marines taking on an invading fleet of orcs. There are moments where you are surrounded by them and you'll slice through them like it's no problem. However, three Space Marines going up against 20 orcs in the actual tabletop version of the game in close combat isn't a contest at all those marines are flat fucking dead. The equivalent of that for someone who isn't familiar with Warhammer is like Floyd Mayweather going up against Logan Paul. Also, as mentioned, the Space Marine Bolter is a rocket propelled explosive weapon and in the tabletop game it's really damn easy to shoot and kill orcs. Basically that's all you want to do because if they get close to you, you're screwed. Where here it will take about half a clip to take out a single orc, which again had me scratching my bald head. It would have been cool if there was a difficulty setting for Space Marine that had some of these tabletop rules ingrained into the game. And that's probably one of my biggest issues with Space Marine and it's the gameplay and how it lines up and compares to the tabletop game. Space Marines are modified humans, sure, and they can take hits and deal them really damn well. If and when you ever start Warhammer, Space Marines are basically the faction that can do everything. But here in this game, Captain Titus and his two other Space Marines take on a Orc army and Chaos Space Marines and survive. While well, yeah, it is a cool story and such, when I played this game as a kid, the entire time I was sitting there going, the captain is fucked. I think it would have been cool having a battalion or an army or a fucking faction, whatever you want to call it, of ultramarines arriving on the planet, rather than just three space marines. From there, we could have had the ability to command a squad of marines, replace weapons and ammo with different pieces of war gear and stuff like that. If you were still Captain Titus and you had a small squad that followed you around on missions. You'll generally have about two Space Marines escort you around currently in this game and they're pretty fucking useless. Where, and I have no idea why this wasn't done, but playing this game co-op with friends would have been fucking awesome. Now Warhammer 40k is all about large scale battles and while the enemy faction is large scale with drop ships and varying enemy units, the levels here are very linear and the campaign has no replayability. Sure, you can go through the levels and find collectible audio logs and such, but once the credit rolled in my original playthrough in 2011 of Space Marine, I didn't replay it until now. The health regeneration system in Space Marine 2, while great and cool on paper, doesn't work for Space Marines. When Space Marine released in the tabletop version of the game, you would get a bonus by keeping your Marines behind cover. And understandably, Space Marine didn't want to be a reskin of Gears of War. But a Space Marine charging into combat to regenerate health from a swarm of orcs is like finding a cure for syphilis in a room of $3 hookers. Now finally, it is a small thing, but it's a big thing for Warhammer that you can basically make your own faction and any real army really, or you can play as an established one. In Space Marine, you're playing as the Ultramarines, which you'll either have a love-hate relationship for them. Now there is a multiplayer mode in Space Marine and you can create your own marine with your own colour scheme or you can play as an existing faction with their own unique look. Now as a kid when this came out I was a Black Templar player who was sort of Knight Crusader sort of style characters and I would have loved to play the entire campaign as a Black Templar. It would have been great if there was some customization in the core campaign. When you first start off if you could choose what faction is sent to eradicate the orcs. 
The voice actors and such can stay the same, but it would change the colour scheme and the visual look of your Space Marine. Sort of like picking a class in Cyberpunk. The core game is still the same, but it would have some smaller changes when you replay the story again with a different faction. If you pick, say, the Space Wolves, Titus would start off with a gnarly power axe and maybe have a beard. If you pick the Salamanders, he would have access to a flamethrower and he would have charcoal skin. Having said all of that though, Space Marine is a pretty fucking fun game. If you know near nothing of the universe, then it's a violent third person shooter with some button bashing combat. The score and the voice acting is fantastic, even the drums from the Orc remind me of the hot chick for some reason. I'm sorry, I just was really getting into your story. Though I'd never heard the pronunciation of Lieutenant though. Second Lieutenant Mira, 203rd Cadian Regiment. Captain Titus of the Ultramarines. Mark Strong is the voice actor for the character of Captain Titus, while the Orcs and Chaos Space Marines have this looter shooter and demonic presence to them. Being a Warhammer fan, it's great to see a game that's brought my imagination to life from the tabletop. Being able to see a space marine use his chainsaw to rev through an orc is pretty damn rad, while the bloodletters made the tabletop models even more menacing for me. If anything you've seen here has caught your attention, then give space marine a look. Now at the start of this video I teased that I was doing another giveaway, and of course I'm doing one. Now thanks to my mates Dom and Oz at Incognito Comics, we've got not one, but two things to give away. Marvel Comics, we all know who they are, right? But they've done a Warhammer comic which I've just read myself and it's not only great for fans but also for someone who's interested in the Warhammer world and series. Warhammer 40,000 Minus Kalgar tells the story of the chapter master of the Ultramarines. I thought it seems fitting to not only have a game about Ultramarines but a comic about the leader of the chapter basically. Not only that, but what else goes with a Warhammer comic? How about a starter set for Warhammer 40k? I'll be giving away a brand new recruit edition of Warhammer 40,000. This is a great way to start Warhammer or add extra models to your existing army. The recruit edition comes with some simple rules on how to play the game as well as two different armies. The Space Marines, which of course you've seen by now, and the Terminator Egyptian Mummy inspired army, the Necrons. To go into the draw, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel Go over to Facebook and like Incognito Comics on Facebook, and the link is in the description below for you, and comment below on this video what your fan-made Space Marine faction would be called and what their colour scheme would be. That's it. The most creative answer will win both the Warhammer comic and the Warhammer Recruiter starter set. Now this competition of course is open worldwide and the most creative answer will win. The winner will be announced on my review of the upcoming Warhammer game Necromunda. And best of luck everyone.